welcome back, guys. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Um, JJ and I are, again, I'm Wakas Saeed. JJ Plank. And uh, we're going to be looking at microwave optics. Um, now, this equipment looks pretty cool. And, uh, you know, the sound of <laughs> microwave optics, I mean, when I heard microwave first, I think of, you know, that thing in my kitchen, he reheats my food. Um, this is not reheat my food, but it does, it is a good demo to show um, how waves work. And uh, you can think of microwave optics as a blown up version of light optics. Um, we're looking at everything at like a much bigger scale. Um, for example, I'm gonna jump into it real quick, like for a diffraction slit for light, we're, um, we're doing a, another demo and we were looking at 600 slits per millimeter. Whereas like for diffraction for this, we're looking at these two slits and they're like, you know, five, six centimeters apart. Yeah, yeah so, it, it takes optics wavelengths of light that were you know really small and now it's much bigger in fact it's the size of a microwave right so the the wavelength is about three centimeters two point something centimeters right um and this particular so we have two pieces these are our key pieces here this is our transmitter and a receiver so the transmitter is what's creating the wave the receiver is what's picking it up um the transmitter transmits the wave is about 10.5 gigahertz um, and it's only about 15 milliwatts, so it's not a strong wave, but, you know, it's, it's there. Um, and then everything we're doing, we're setting transmitter receiver. It's somewhere between, you know, like up to about a meter apart. So, you know, they're not too far apart, but it, it's strong enough to pick up the, the signals at about one meter. Yeah, and the, the, the transmitter and receiver, uh, they're not over overly complicated. It just uses diodes, right? So one uses a gun dial, the other uses a shot key diode. Uh, and creates uh, microwaves linearly polarized right in the direction that the, the diode is physically oriented in right and then it's receiving them using a diode again linearly polarized in the direction that the diode is physically in so we, we're creating them here we're receiving them here and the polarization plane that they lie in sits in the same plane that the the diode itself sits in and um it's what's very important is that in order to get the correct reading or at least the, the the strength of the wave at like the full strength of the wave um these need to be oriented at the same angle um and uh it's a little bit hard to turn right now but you'll see one is a little you know one orientation that sits a little bit wider one it sits a little bit taller um, and i can easily rotate these um we have a degree indicator on the back so i know what angle i'm i've turned this um, we're going to start off with both of these at zero degrees um, then at zero degrees, like my unit here has an LED at the top. That's where it's oriented correctly. And on the receiver, we have the the meter oriented on the side. So it's very convenient for you guys to see. Um, for us, we'll have to peek our heads over and, and take a look at what the reading is. Um, and what's important is, so the wave, there's a slit in here that's like, uh, the slit is like this but the wave is actually traveling up and down like this. Right. Yeah, and the, there's a, inside each of these is a, is a resonator. So there's a resonant cavity in there that that dial sits in. And these horns are just waveguides for those microwaves. Uh, and so we point them at each other and one sends the wave, one receives it. And although the, the diode is, is sitting about back in here and then the same thing with this one, uh, the effective point at which it's being received because of the geometry and the waveguide and the resonator, uh, the resonant cavity in there, it's about five centimeters from the front of the horn here. Right? Uh, from the, yeah, yeah. From the front of the horn. Yeah, and so when we, we make measurements, we can say, hey, this wave is being generated here and it's being received here, right? So um, a really quick setup, like, so the first, um, so the manual that comes with the experiment it has, I believe, 12 experiments that are included with this. So this can do a lot uh, for just ordering one equipment set. Um, the basic system comes with what you see here, you know, the receiver, the transmitter, um, some like a reflecting lens, of uh, polarizers. It comes with a few of these things. Uh, if you buy the advanced kit, you'll get this unit for Bragg diffraction. Yeah, we've got, I mean, it's got, it's basically an optics system so if you had like an optics bench that had things like mirrors and you know diffraction slits and stuff like that prisms this has that but it's just 
feels and looks a little different because it's on such a different scale. Yeah, it's, the the prism for this is actually this styrofoam, you know, prism shaped object here, which we filled filled with uh, pellets of polystyrene. Yep, styrene pellets. Yeah. Yep. So you know, this is a lot bigger than your your prism for optics, but the effect is the experiment is very very similar. I mean, we've got you know, this is uh, this is masonite, right, with a melamine uh, cap on it, and it's a partial reflector, right? So as we when we put this here, some of the microwaves are reflected, and some of them are, are transmitted, right? So we can do experiments uh, that like, has to do with refraction, right? Or we can do things like Brewster's angle if we want to figure out what or the Michelson interferometer. Yep. Or we can use the Michelson interferometer. We can configure this to be an interferometer, right? Just like we saw in yesterday's demonstration, except instead of laser light, we're using microwaves. Awesome. So um, let's jump into the first experiment just to show you like a really quick example or demo of how this works. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to set these two um, about 40 centimeters apart from the at these points. At the diodes, yeah. So it doesn't have to be exactly 40, but you know. It's, yeah. And so in the in the manual, uh, in all of the experiments, it recommends sort of a calibration procedure. It's not technically a calibration, but. Uh, you set them to 40 centimeters and then you adjust the settings here. So there are gain, there's a gain setting on the front of this uh, receiver here. And it's got a 1X, 3X, 10X, and 30X setting as well as an adjustable gain here. And so you, set, you move them apart 40 centimeters, uh, you adjust this gain setting, and then you adjust this line to set it to one milliamp on the scale here. And so there's an analog meter, uh, you know, ammeter here you set it to one, and then you start your experiments. So you've basically calibrated the system uh, to be, you know, to give you measurements that are readable. So for the first experiment, um, it outlines, as JJ mentioned, we're, we're going to set it to about 40 centimeters, and we're going to just take measurements at every 10 centimeters. Um, we're gonna take a measurement of the meter reading and the distance. Now, what's important is there's, there's really three readings that we're going to be doing consistently on these. Um, it's going to be well, like three, four. Um, it's number one is the angle. So the angle at which these two are to each other. Um, the second one is the distance, how far apart they are. Uh, third one's going to be the angle of the transmitter and then the angle of the receiver. Right. Um, so they're missing? No, th so th they're, they're polarized, right? So the, the uh, Microwaves that are coming out of the transmitter are linearly polarized, right? And so if the receiver uh, is at an angle, tilted at an angle that's not along that polarization axis, then uh, you're going, your measurements are going to go down. And so if we, here, it's set to one here, if you just twist that one, you'll see that the reading goes down. And when they're at 90 degrees to each other, it's zero, sure. right? And so when, when we talk about that angle in between them, right? There is a, uh, a graduated angle scale on the back of each of them that we can use to measure the difference between those transmission axes. Yeah, so the first experiment just gives you an introduction to how the system works. Um, the second one is actually where we're, we're doing something a little bit more creative, which is a reflection. So we're looking at how uh, waves reflect. So um, we're going to Angle, uh, have a difference of angle about 45 degrees. Going to... And you'll notice the, if you can see that the, the measurement on the analog ammeter here has gone to zero, right? Because the microwaves are going off in this direction. It's just like if you had a flashlight or a laser, right? The laser beam goes over there, we're not seeing it anymore. So a lot of our pieces here, they're, you know, they're modular. We can, we can uh, arrange them in many different orientations. Uh, this base has a little hole in the middle and that's to put it right dead center of our goniometer here. And um, it's magnetic. So, you know, if I attach your reflector on here, it's magnetically on there. So I can go ahead and put this on here. Um, so it says we're going to adjust these to oh, be about 45. Yeah, we just, we're going to adjust these the angle so keep that yeah flat like that right and then we're going to measure so if this is at zero right 180 degrees whoops that's 160 right right you can move these and then adjust this 
mirror until it's maximum mirror, I call it a mirror, right? And now we can measure the incident and the reflected angles here, right? And we can demonstrate or prove the law of reflection, right? Even though we're using microwaves instead of like a, a laser beam, right? Yeah, so we're, uh, what we can do, like, let's actually just go ahead and do the first one. Let's set this at 20 degree um, angle of incidence, which is 20 degree difference in angle of where the beam is coming and, and the reflector here. And then we can slowly rotate this and figure out where we can get the maximum reading on our yeah, so that, the but, receiver. Right, so yeah, it would be 90 minus 20 is what you've got right now. Right. Yeah. And so we just swing this around. You see it was maximum right about there. Okay, and then we just go through, um, you know, turn this at 20 degrees offset, 30, 40, 50, 60, and so on. Yeah. And so for real shallow angles, right, you can have this goniometer collapse like this. And so this is, looks like it's about uh, 25 or 30 degrees in terms of angle of incidence versus angle of reflection, reflection. And so we can adjust this to be maximum and then measure those angles and record them law of reflection. Um, Experiment three in the manu manual is uh, sanding waves. Now, sanding waves are important uh, because you don't really think about them when you think about a wave going out, but what really happens is, you know, when a wave leaves, um, it can obviously bounce off the surface and come back. So sanding wave is at that point where the wave that's coming back has this, or it's changed by about half a wavelength. So the, the, the wave coming back actually interferes with the, the wave that's being transmitted and um, at that point, we call it a sanding wave. So the way we can measure a sanding wave is um, as we slide this, we'll see that the reading on the intensity, it's going to go, you know, it's going to go up and then back down then up and down at different points across the meter. Yeah. And that minimum is that's a point where we're at a standing wave. Uh, yeah. So the, the these uh, resonators and uh wave guys actually act like a reflector to some degree so the microwave uh, is emitted comes down it's received here but some of it gets reflected back right and so we get this bouncing back and forth between these wave guides of those microwaves uh and the the wavelength is fixed right and so if we can get the distance between them just right we can set up you know standing waves in between these two wave guides uh and that's that's basically what you do, and as as you adjust. So yeah, if you take a look at the screen here, we'll we'll go ahead and just slide one over, and you'll see. Yeah, and so it's going up, down, up, down, up, down, and you'll see that every time it goes up and down, you're you're cycling in and out of that uh, standing wave relationship, right? And so you'll see that about every half of a wavelength. So every time you move this thing, and remember, it's going down and reflecting back. So every half wavelength you're cycling through. So every time you see uh, maximum amperage to maximum amperage, the distance that you've moved is half of a wavelength, right? And we know the wavelength. And so we can demonstrate standing waves. Um, the next thing is refraction. Oh, oh. I'm sorry. No. And you can also do it with a reflector too, right? So these act like a partial reflector. It works, but you can use uh, a mirror, right? Just like if we had a rope tied to a wall except there might be a phase shift difference. Um, next thing, let's look at our prism example that we talked about. Um, in order to use that, we're going to have our, uh, this is called a rotating table. Um, this comes with the basic kit. It has a little notch on the bottom here, and that's so we can um, keep track of the angle on the goniometer. So let's go ahead and set that down. Zero degrees. And uh, now for this, the angle doesn't matter, but the angle for this is really what we're looking at. Um, and we are going to set our prism here. Um, so the transmitter is going to send the wave to the prism. Uh, we're gonna have an incident wave, which is the angle. <laughs> yeah, so the, the microwaves come straight in here, right? And the the medium where they're going to experience a different index of refraction are is it within these pellets here, right? Oops, one just fell out. Um, and so the microwaves come through this surface perpendicular, so it doesn't experience right, a change in direction. 
but then it hits this surface between the polystyrene and air effectively, right? right? And so it's going to experience a change in direction, right? And so the normal line is in this direction. We've got some incident angle, right? And so we can adjust this, right? The angle of this uh, receiver to a position where it's maximum. So right there. And so you can see that there is a little bit of a change in angle there, right? And so we so have our angle of incidence and our angle of reflect. Refraction. Refraction. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And and then we can, you know, we can demonstrate Snell's law using microwaves. Perfect. Um, and then uh, the next thing we can do is polarization. Um, now, we talked about polarization at the beginning. So the simplest way to show polarization is what JJ mentioned is, you know, by turning one in, uh, by turning one of these. So actually, I'll, I'll turn the transmitter so you can still see the, uh, this, the meter here. So as you'll see, it, it's we're at you know pretty high value. As soon as I turn this, it's gonna go to zero. Now this is where uh, the polar polarizer comes into play. Let's see what the here. Yeah, and so you can just by turning the horns or turning the transmitter or the receiver, you can measure the angle there. You could do a Malice's law experiment, right, where you can show that the strength of the intensity squared times the cosine of that angle in between them, right? Yeah, we can actually, um, we can turn this, you know, 10 degrees at a time and just get the reading of our intensity. And yeah, as JJ mentioned, uh, use Malice's law and, and yeah. go about it that way. Um, now the other quick way to show polar polarization is to use the polarizer here. Um, so we can see, so we should be getting uh, Yeah, so they're, they're 90 degrees to each other, right? Yeah, So they're 90 degrees, so we have no signal really yes. be pick that's being picked up. That's right. Um, I'll put this right here with the slits this way. What's our reading? It doesn't change, right? Nope. So let's change the horizontal. Yep. Still no change, Still right? Still no change. Now here's the trick. Let's put it at 45 degrees. Yes, yeah, so now you can see that the amp, the ammeter has jumped up some, right? And so what we've got here is uh, the microwaves come out polarized in this plane right and they need to be received in this plane right but that 90 degrees means we're not going to see any any microwaves with this receiver but as it travels through this polarizer right there is a component in the direction of the polarization angle of this and so that tiny little component does get transmitted but it's sort of projected onto that polarization a different polarization plane right and then that component will be seen. There is a component of that that will be seen by this. And so you can see that by adding that polarizing filter in between at some intermediate angle that all of a sudden you get, you're seeing light or you're seeing the microwaves. And, and the same thing would happen with, you know, light optics. And we can also do this with, uh, the experiment comes with two polarizers. So we can actually have one at um, let's say like 22 and a half degrees and the other one at around what 60, 60 sure. degrees and, and and show the same thing that way, uh, the second one being in there. Yeah, and also the, you can demonstrate how, you know, Polaroids or polarized filters work, right? So you've got this. So, the waves are polarized, they make it through this because they're, they're, that axis, that polarization axis is the same as the transmission axis for this polar, polarizing filter. But as soon as you put one in there that's perpendicular to it, now it doesn't, doesn't make it through, right? So you can demonstrate how polarizers work. Um, we can also do interference with this. So double slit interference. Um, as we showed at the beginning, this is our, uh, double slit apparatus here that we created. Um, the experiment will tell you to try to set these about one and a half centimeters apart. So you want them, want to be try to be as exact as we can. Uh, let me go ahead and pull. Yeah, because when the slit width is on the order of the wavelength, you know, it's, things start happening. <laughs> <It's really happening. laughs> yeah. So, let's scoot over some. So as we learned in the polarization um, experiment, the waves are actually traveling this way. 
So we need to rotate these 90 degrees so that they'll actually make it through our uh, double slit to front, or slits that we created. Yeah, and so uh, you can then, I'm gonna move some of this stuff out of the way. So this part will be hard. You'll kind of have to take our work for it just because of the camera angle. Yeah, so then I can move this, I can swing this receiver around and the amperage, the ammeter that's being read here goes up right here where a zero order maxima would be. And when he says it goes up, I mean, we're talking like point, point four yeah, it's, it's small, it's, it's, like it's really, it's a small change. But then if I keep swinging it, I'll find another area right here where the, the amp, the, that reading on the scale here goes up again, right? And, so, you know, again, we notate that same angle and yeah. we'll do it the third time. So we could have a first order maxima and then we keep going way out here and there's actually a second order maxima out here and then we can we can use that relationship right that that right yeah we can record the intensity record the angles as we you know sweep across this this uh this point yeah the make, make a nice graph and and we have our diffraction pattern lambda equals a sine theta um lloyd's mirror this one's kind of cool uh, so what this one is, is we're, we're going to set the receiver and transmitter pretty far apart. Um, it's saying at least about a meter apart. And uh, normally we would use our extra track right here. Let me see if I can actually set this up. But essentially what we're doing is we're... So we know that when the wave leaves our uh, transmitter it's not just going straight to the receiver. There are waves that are being propagated outwards as well. So what Lloyd's mirror is, is we're actually taking a reflector and we're going to be moving it towards the, towards the wave here. And actually what we'll see is we'll see that the intensity will increase. It will actually, it'll fluctuate a little bit, but it will change based off of the position of the mirror. Yeah, because when that distance is just right, you get reflection back, you know, away from the transmitter, back towards the receiver. So you get this sort of constructive interference right here. So that's another, uh, so we can, you know, as we change this distance, we can, you know, notate what the intensity is and, and get a nice graph that way. Um, that's, we have a question, guys. Yeah. yeah. What would happen if you place the third polarizer between the So uh, the idea is that you would see the same thing that we saw earlier when we put the two horns at 90 degrees and put one in at 45, right? That same thing would happen. The problem is uh, you lose a lot of intensity by doing that. So it would be difficult to detect it, but yes, that, you know, you should be able to see the same phenomenon. But we tried that earlier and it was difficult to see it. It was much more dramatic when we just used the horns in a single, uh, filter at 45 degrees. And the more plates we add in between, you know, the more of a signal we're actually lo we're losing. Yeah. Um, so the next step, uh, Fabry Pro interferometer. So with that, we can use the two semi, uh, the partial reflectors and place them here. We can adjust the distance in between and just to figure out where we're getting the uh, maximum intensity. As well as uh, after that, we're, you know, we're looking at the, the Michelson interferometer. Uh, that one, it does take a little bit of time to set, to set up. So we're gonna just skip over that part today, but it's a similar thing to the, the laser interferometer or Michelson interferometer that you saw where we have, we're using the, the partial reflector in the middle. Um, it's, you know, putting some waves in this direction, some waves in this direction and the waves are bouncing back and forth. We're gonna be picking up the intensity of, on one side of it and uh, reflecting on another. We're gonna be adjusting that, that point. Yeah, and, and as you adjust the, hey, so you've got, you've got microwaves. So this is the transmitter, the microwaves that come down. This will be at 90 degrees, right? So over here, you've got a mirror. So one of these silver pieces over here and then a partial a reflector in between. This is acts like a beam splitter, right? We send some down this path, right? We send some down this path, and as they collect, they, they meet down here by the receiver. Uh, depending on the position or the, the path length difference, you'll get constructive or destructive interference at the receiver. So as you adjust it, you'll see that the meter 
sort of fluctuate just as you would with a, our regular interferometer. So JJ, what's this cool thing over here? This bag oh, full yeah, of right. plastic pellets. So the uh, the prism was filled with those styrene pellets, right? And so one other activity that you can do um, is you the system comes with these bags, these long uh, bags here. You can fill them with the pellets and create a fiber optic cable, basically. And so now we can take this and you know bend it to some angle, like that, let's say. And so if you here, slide this one back just a little bit. There, that's perfect. Yeah. Too much. So if you hold this end of the cable, go ahead. Yeah. Hold it into the, the light, the beam of light. You can guide it back over here. And you can see as I move the fiber optic cable into the receiver, you get you get a reading. If I take it out, it goes to zero. And so you can demonstrate fiber optics with this using these styrene pellets in this bag. It's pretty awesome. And e even when they're facing each other, we can put the our, uh, our fiber optic cable in between to see how it will actually help the, the wave. Like if I don't have, oh, well, let's change our scale. I'll actually take that back. Maybe it didn't help the wave. <laughs> uh, well, You've gotten that far wrong. So, so <laughs> fiber optics, right? You can talk about total internal reflection, right? Those microwaves go into the cable, this cable, and they stay in the cable as long as you don't bend it too much, right? So you can demonstrate. This what this this bag is a little too full, right? If I bent it even more, I think it would probably rip. But you can demonstrate. You know, these microwaves can make it around corners by using a fiber optic cable, just like this. So without the cable there, you get nothing. With the cable there, you get a reading. So all of these can be done with the basic um, system as it comes with. Uh, we do have a few optional accessories that you can buy. Um, the first is this microwave probe. Um, what this allows, you can actually um, use connect this to the receiver and put it in place of the receiver as like a like an antenna for receiving signals. Yeah, it's just it this microwave probe connects to the receiver here straight in the bottom right and so you can use this thing to probe different areas to measure the the, the strength of the, those waves or the intensity of those waves uh, and then the same the same uh analog meter will measure those for you so we're railed here turn that down just a little bit and so if you want to explore nodes and anti-nodes in a standing wave, right, you can take that standing wave experiment, set it up so you've got standing waves, and then you can slide the probe through here, right? And so some of the waves are being uh, measured, right? The, the, the strength of those waves is being measured uh, with this diode, and some of them are making it through and still reflecting. And so you can find the areas where you've got maximum uh, amplitude versus zero amplitude, right? Nodes and anti-nodes. Um, now with uh, some another accessory kit that we have is uh, it comes with this uh, polyethylene panel here as well as the Bragg diffraction um, unit yeah, here crystallography uh, right so this um, is similar to like what our prism was made out of you know it's made out of plastic that's adjusting the what happens with the wave it doesn't completely block it but it does um, allow some of the, the wave to go through um, we can actually put this on our bench here and this is where we need that that meter on there because what we're, we're going to do is we're going to going to adjust the angle between in, angle of incidence and angle of refraction um, between the our panel here and the receiver um, and you know doing the same thing we're, we're sweeping across and looking for minimums and maxima um, across the as we adjust the angle but what's important here is that we need to adjust, um, for this experiment, we actually need to adjust the angle of both of these. So for every one degree I adjust this, I need to adjust this two degrees because we want that angle to be similar. We want the change in angle to be similar relative to both. Um, and then the, kind of the last experiment is a uh, Bragg diffraction. is where we're using actually this. 
unit here. Um, what Bragg diffraction is, is you'll see uh, these metal balls that are inside of this, uh, this unit here. Um, and what this does is it changes where the wave is reflecting. So it's, depending on the angle, the waves are gonna hit each one of these at a different point and it's going to change the, um, the amount of, uh, of the wave that it, it allows to transmit through. Yeah, you get, it's like a crystallography, sort of a crystal diffraction pattern, right? So we can use the transmitter and swing it around to different angles and we can measure, right, what those, we can basically detect what that diffraction pattern looks like. So, I mean, uh, you get the basic pattern here is, I mean, this thing is pretty all encompassing. There's a lot of experiments it can do. This isn't just for, you know, for one day of physics. I mean, this is at least like a few days in the lab, um, especially when, you know, students are recording data, they're analyzing the data, they have to make the charts. I mean, there's, there's a lot of homework to be done here. Um, and it's cool. I mean, you, you can decide what you want to do with the optics. It's, you can design the kit to however, however you want it to use it in your classroom. And it's a much, um, Sometimes it's a much easier way for students to grasp the idea in their mind of like a wavelength because by adjusting this, you know, two or three centimeters, we can see the wave change versus like adjusting a micrometer on a little handle and, and trying to figure that out with light. But um, we actually will be doing something like that next, but, you know, jump into that. But uh, yeah, are there any questions from the audience on any of our, um, on what we've shown you today? You did get a comment if you could briefly show a standing wave um, sure. Can you measure it using your reflector? Sure, sure. Put that inside. Hmm? Is that better? Oh, yeah, that's fine. Here, you be the pro now. So just take a look at the intensity meter here as I um, go ahead and so I need to change all this still. I need to change the 30s. There, so go ahead and move closer. Goes, you can see. So as I'm sliding this, you'll see the wave. Go way up, way down, way up, way down, way up, way down, and you'll see the, the difference between one high amplitude spot and another one is half of a wavelength. And the proper way to do this actually is two of these. So yeah, we can just slide this back and forth, um, and then yeah, we'll see the intensity change on there. Okay. Yeah. Move this back yeah. There we go. Now move that. There you go. There's a maxima. Right there. There's a minimum right there. So that's the point where we have a standing wave. And as I sweep across, go another about two. Like, 1.75 centimeters at another maxima, and as they go again, there we go. Yeah. Another standing wave. Any other question? Oh, um, they're asking if the sensor is included in the standard kit. Uh, this one is not. This is an optional accessory. And that uh, the diode that's used in this probe, it's, it's highly sensitive to electrostatics, so. It, if you do get it, be very careful, you know, have students mind what they're touching. They, they're, they're, the sensitive area is that diode right in the center of it there. Otherwise, you know, handling it out here in the semiconductor is not a big deal. All right. Well, if that's it, then thank you again for joining us. So we have one more experiment that's going to happen after this. Um, we're looking at the wireless diffraction scanner. So we'll be back shortly to, uh, to show you that. Thanks.